In this tutorial, we'll discuss the bezel builder. We'll go to the gems menu and select the gem loader. We'll bring out a round gemstone, click on tab 2 and bring out a 6mm round gem. Let's open up the perspective viewport and with the gem highlighted we'll hit F6 or the centre mouse button and go to the bezel option. The bezel option will give us all of these viewport control handles, each one controlling a different aspect of the bezel itself. If you roll your mouse across a particular handle it will turn red and that is when you know you can adjust using that particular handle. Let's talk about the bezel angle. We're going to hold down our left mouse button and just simply drag the handle out and in until you have the desired angle. If you hold down your shift button it will give you increments of 5 degrees. Once you've achieved the angle that you're after, simply let go of the mouse. The base thickness again controls things like the thickness of the bezel itself. If you hold down shift it will give you increments of 0.1 of a mil. The height is fairly self-explanatory. Again, holding down shift gives you increments of 0.1 of a mil. The other viewport control handles at the top of the bezel control the Z height of the chamfer, the top thickness of the bezel itself, the X axis of the chamfer, so if you wanted it completely flat, the dome height. This is particularly handy when it comes to rendering. You can take that right down to zero if you'd prefer no dome. The seat depth, so how far in the stone sits into the bezel, can be adjusted. If I turn off my preview shade in my display menu, you, we can see inside the bezel itself. And this is particularly handy for these viewport control handles here. So for example, the seat length, the angle of the seat, and also the scale of the bezel itself, which is particularly handy if you have a gemstone that has a rounder pavilion than usual. We can adjust that, adjust the seat angle accordingly, and the seat length if required. Before we hit enter you also have some different profiles at the moment we can see we've got a flat profile here. If we click on the handle here it will open up our different profiles that we can find in Matrix 9. We can select a different profile that will give us a preview of that profile and of course every one of these profiles can be edited and saved if required. I'm going to stick with this one here. Double click that, make some adjustments. And once you're happy simply hit enter. And there's our bezel. It's important to note that if we need to edit this bezel for any reason we simply can select the bezel F6 or center mouse button and click on edit bezel and it will bring back all of the viewport control handles required. It's also important to note that on the left hand side of the screen we have our manual controls which you can adjust if you'd prefer to use these or simply type in a particular parameter and hit enter and that will be exactly 2.5 mil just simply by clicking through each one of these options enables you to control the desired shape of the viewport control handles as required. Simply hit enter when you're finished and there is your finished bezel. Let's talk about another tool that's particularly handy with a bezel called the bezel cutter. Let's select the bezel itself 
F6 or center mouse button and click on bezel cutter. Now what it's going to do is it's going to create some cutters for us and a preview of what it's actually doing or what those cutters are doing. Now that's because we have the boolean option turned on. Now you'll see this cutter is a default cutter that comes out. We can adjust this cutter as we see fit by just simply manipulating the viewport control handles. Adjusting things like the outside and inside sizes. And it gives you a pretty good preview as to what this particular cutter is going to do to this bezel. We can adjust things like the angle. So if you wanted to cut out Adjust the Z height. And once you're happy with everything there, we can simply hit enter. And that will automatically Boolean that for you. Let's look at another bezel tool. We're going to bring out a gemstone from the gem loader. And this time we'll bring out a 3mm gem. I also want to bring out a ring rail. So I'm going to bring out a size M. And then in the through finger viewport, I'm going to select my gemstone and just using my gumball, take that gemstone into position where I want it to sit just above the ring rail there. With that gem highlighted, we're going to hit F6 and instead of going to bezel, we're going to go to under bezel, which will create an under bezel for us. And you can see here that it has accounted for the circumference of the ring rail automatically. Again you can see that you have the same viewport control handles that you had with the bezel builder all controlling different things like the angle, the height, you can see as we bring that height beyond that ring rail it automatically accounts for it and all of the other tools such as scale, the dome height, the top thickness, etc. Also our profile. Once we're happy with everything there, we simply hit enter. A practical use of this is to select the piece and we can use our rotate option with copy turned on. Copy from F4 at the center of the universe And from that point there to here to these points, hit enter, select these three pieces here and simply mirror around F4, hold down shift to engage ortho. And then we can simply select all of our gems here. F6 and select our prong tool, drop that prong down beyond the finger rail there, adjust the thicknesses of the prong, a large prong diameter will take out to say about 0.9mm, we can adjust the height if we require, taper. And once we're happy, simply select our prongs, go to our cutters menu and cut to finger rail, and then sweep a shank around that. 